Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Cancer at 14 degrees, 23 minutes on July 5th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connecting with our multidimensional self and receive a much bigger perspective of our uh, transits and then energy that's uh, available to us right now at this new moon. In this video, you'll receive three energetic themes that I see are key for this new moon in Cancer. And also at the end, I give you a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this Cancer new moon energy some more? Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description below. This new moon has an element of the unknown in it. And the reason I'm saying that is that this new moon is ruled by the moon. And that makes it even more mysterious. This new moon is talking about that it's time to step out of the material world for a moment and connect with the supernatural and the unknown. This new moon is uh, a new moon that activates a galactic heritage related to the human race. And the reason I say that is that the, this new moon is conjunct Canis Major Sirius A. And that is a fixed star uh, that is very connected to human galactic heritage. And also opposite the new moon here, we have Lyra Vega. And I'll talk more about this uh, connection to galactic human heritage and how it activates us at this new moon in theme one coming up. This new moon is speaking of all the work that has been taking place within the past couple of months and even years, perhaps. And this is also a new moon that's activating our desire to collectively start to express all the wisdom that we have gained over the years and months and days of work that we've done within. So sometimes we realize that the old self, the person we used to be is no longer, uh, because here we are in this uh, era of transformation and at the doorstep of a new era. Uh, and I'm talking about the overall shift between energies. For example, if we put it through the lens of water and earth, the dominance of water and earth energies the past number of hundred, hundreds of years have been very prominent as we are stepping into a shift to more air and fire element uh, focus. And this also shows us our transformation within. And now we're starting to get the urge to start to share all that wisdom that we've gained into the collective. So this new moon in Cancer is really um, an acknowledgement and honoring all the work that we've done within. And in Cancer here, it speaks to the ancient wisdom that many of us have come into connection with and now feel it's time to start sharing it. And at this new moon, that feeling of that there are other realms that we are uh, simultaneously traversing in this life, but in the unseen. And that is the connection to the what we call the supernatural sometimes, that uh, many of us are getting closer and closer connected to and starting to relate to our multidimensional self in that way. This new moon is also highlighting how we are accessing this ancient wisdom to be shared with the wider collective. And that is the realms within, uh, from that inner peace, from that inner strength, and from that awareness of what makes us unique. 
So this is a new moon that highlights also where we came from and the progress that we've made over the past years, months, days. All of us are a storehouse of wisdom. And this new moon is really highlighting that and guides us forward on our journey next. Before we go into the new moon chart, I'd like to share what the three energetic themes are. The first theme is a leap of faith into the unknown. And here we start off with the new moon conjunct Sirius A opposite Lyra Vega. But we also will talk about Corvus, Algarab, and a dwarf planet Salacia. The second theme I've called No Choice But to Love. And that is a, a very powerful theme talking about Perseus Algol opposite Beta Centauri Hadar and the influence from Chiron and Uranus and Mars at this time. The third theme I've called Reprogramming Lyra Soul Memories. And here we're going to talk about Lyra Ring Nebula M57 and also Asteroid Juno. And at the end, you'll receive the three questions that I've put together to help you integrate this new moon energy some more. So next, let's take a look at the new moon chart. So here we have the new moon chart. And as you can see, the sun and the moon are together there in Cancer at 14 degrees, conjunct Canis Major, Sirius A at 14 degrees of Cancer. So it's an exact conjunction here, highlighting the importance of Sirius A uh, as our guiding star many times in ancient times. Now also we have... Uh, the new moon opposite Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn. And we also have Cirrus there at 14 degrees of Capricorn. And we'll talk about this uh, some more in theme one coming up. The ruler of this new moon is the moon. So the moon is highlighted a little extra at this new moon. And the importance of the moon in Cancer here is the focus on our emotional world, our intuition, our uh, Cancer is uh, the fourth house in the zodiac wheel. So it's also uh, focusing on our inner interior, <laughs> our self, our inner world. So this goes along with the message of this new moon. And opposite Cancer is Capricorn, which is often associated with the 10th house, which has to do with career and profession and structure and so on. So there is this uh, axis of Capricorn and Cancer highlighted at this new moon. So Lyra and Sirius are often associated with also the collective experience here on Earth and soul memories associated with the collective. With no further ado, let's take a look at the first energetic theme that I've called a leap of faith into the unknown. So here we have the first theme that I've called a leap of faith into the unknown. And here we have the new moon there, conjunct uh, Sirius A. And Sirius A at 14 degrees of Cancer is associated with spiritual mastery of guardianship and, and being a, a storehouse, a, a keeper of ancient wisdom. Uh, it's a very expansive forward action type of energy, but also more, um, if we call it um, uh, masculine oriented. Now, we also have this opposition to Cirrus and Lyra Vega, which is very interesting, the balance into the divine feminine. Lyra Vega is more of a feminine uh, polarized energy, if you will, but also associated with spiritual mastery. And um, this is a, a balancing act here, since Ceres is really highlighting the um, emphasis on abundance, abundance of uh, divine feminine energy at this time. Ceres is conjunct Lyra Vega to show us the way into how to 
parent ourselves because um, Ceres is not only about harvest and abundance. It's also uh, an energy that is showing us how to come into spiritual sovereignty. So Ceres is very empowered as an energy. And uh, here, conjunct Lyra Vega, it really emphasizes the and gives us direction on what balancing we need to do as opposed to uh, more of our masculine energy in at this new moon. Sirius A is also associated with the wisdom of water creatures such as dolphins and whales. And Sirius is associated with creatures on land in Capricorn here. Um, and also the communication differences between, let's say, whales and dolphins are really by frequency versus land-born creatures that may communicate with more sound, uh, which is also vibration, but um, a, in a different way. So this new moon is really talking about how we can start communicating and balancing this uh, mode of communication within ourselves to start to be able to share the spiritual wisdom that many of us have brought here um, just by incarnating here. And this is a preparation for how each of us will um, communicate in our own way. But before that, we need to step into the unknown and allow energies that are not serving us anymore, perhaps energies that generate self-doubt or uh, not enough feelings. This is why there's a T-square to the Corvus constellation and the fixed star Algarab here at 13 degrees of Libra. And this is a, a fixed star Algarab that has to do with releasing uh, energies that no longer serves us. The Corvus constellation is often a, a very deep um, energy that is associated with messaging and subconscious messaging. And often we get this little nudge within that there's something that we need to let go of. The Corvus constellation is associated with the crow. And as we know, the crow uh, on land is a messenger. So whatever messages that you have received or inklings from within that you have been uh, feeling is coming to the surface, uh, notice what those are. Allow that to come into your self-awareness. So those messages that you have received from within and really have been holding maybe for a while that are now becoming so apparent that in your journey, they're not certain those, whether it's beliefs, whether it's perspectives, whether it's uh, something that somebody told you, this is the time now to utilize this T-square to make a leap forward. And sometimes it's something that's not seen, right? It's something that you feel on the inside. So pay attention to the messages from Algorab here at this new moon. And it may be something that has come up since the new moon in Gemini on June 6th, because at that new moon, the south node was conjunct Algorab. So, and by now it's up for clearance at this new moon. And speaking of the south node here, we have the south node conjunct true Lilith at 11 degrees at this time, opposite, of course, the north node. And the north node is conjunct the dwarf planet Salasia. Now, this makes a, a grand cross. And it, the importance of this opposition here with, between Salasia and Lilith, true Lilith, is significant because here we are talking about releasing um, old negative energies that may not serve us anymore. And with Lilith's support here, conjunct the South Node at this time, this is also from this perspective of being the rebel and being the rebel in the sense that are there things that you believe or have wanted to express but you have not been able to because of various reasons. There have been suppressed 
So ask yourself that question. What are some of the things that are just beneath the surface that you are now believing is true for you? Those are about, those energies are about to surface because part of this release of negative energies that are not serving us, we also create room for more of what we are at this time. So Lilith is here to bring out your inner rebel and making space for what you are here to express next. And she is part of the cleaning house team here <laughs> around the South Node. And with Algorab's help as well, this is a very powerful energy at this new moon. Part of Lilith's um, journey here with Algorab's support is that this is the leap of faith into the unknown. I want to draw your attention to the North Node conjunct Salacia here at 10 and 11 degrees of Aries. This is a powerful conjunction at this time because Salacia gives us direction on energy that we are going to step into and what we are asked to embrace and bring in to a greater extent. And it has to do with the intimate relationship that we have with ourselves and also the unseen. So here is an element of leap of faith again, <laughs> because Salacia brings in that uh, intimate inner relationship that we may have with synchronicity, seeing the signs, uh, with psychic experiences of other realms modalities such as hypnosis and telepathy and our inner experiences of psychic phenomena and the supernatural. So this is a very um, um, futuristic energy, if you will. Salacia is a member of the Kuiper Belt objects, and uh, Salacia is one of the guiding forces, guiding energies of the future New Earth energy. The experience with Salacia is really the one of synchronicity and also the moment that we are get presented with once we are connected to our heart and our faith in um, the universe and the unseen. So here it is a guiding force that is presenting us with the qualities of Salacia. Basically, the conjunction with the North Node is guidance on where we're heading, the faith in the unseen, the trust in synchronicities, the wonder and the awe of uh, moments in our lives that we can only experience from the inside of us uh, and knowing and trusting what it means for us. And each of us experience this individually and uh, differently. But it's that uh, aspect of the connection with the universe and our interpretation of that and allowing us to follow that guidance. This is also an energy that we cannot figure out with our logical mind. This is more of a body experience. So yes, Salacia is very much uh, linked into our sacral chakra in that sense, that it has to do with um, gut feeling, body sensation. And often that's how we experience synchronicities. It, it, we get goosebumps or we get uh, like a physical reaction to it. So yes, this conjunction with the North Node is a beautiful guide of what space is available to us once we uh, release those negative energies that may have held us down. This is the space within us that we are invited to open up to. So here we have Salacia, Ceres, and Lilith, the three powerful divine feminine energies that are influencing this grand cross here with the new moon involved. This is uh, a beautiful collection of archetypal energies that we have available to us now. Salacia is that inner experience of a balanced masculine feminine and the um, alignment that we can feel also when synchronicities are showing up for us. And Salacia in Aries, it's about ourselves and our perception of ourselves and other uh, realities as well. 
and Sirius in Capricorn here is a abundant, empowered divine feminine that has to do with being generous, but also realizing the abundance within and how we parent ourselves into that self-love. And in Capricorn, it's also about routines and structures for how we come back to ourself and how we love ourselves. And those routines that we may establish for ourselves on a daily basis may be pulled from ancient wisdom, uh, rituals, and uh, practices that are nurturing that connection with our soul selves. Now, Lilith in Libra here, she is one that does not take no for an answer, and she wants to go beyond the boundaries into what we have wanted to do all the time, but have not allowed ourselves to do. Now, but first, there's a clearing house <laughs> that needs to happen, and Corvus Algorab is here to help us release those negative energies that have held us down at this time. And here is the highlight on Sirius A uh, at 14 degrees of Cancer and Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn, two constellations that are very much associated with galactic human heritage and a connection between uh, ancient soul memories and our lives on Earth today. This is a new moon that's highlighting this to a large extent. And we are also going to talk more about this in theme three coming up. Both Sirius and Lyra represent spiritual mastery and also how to um, harness that spiritual mastery. Many uh, advanced souls that are incarnated on earth now have soul memories from Sirius and Lyra Vega particularly. And this is also part of the seed that many of us are, are bringing here to get in contact with. So if you have any planets or points or even angles on 10 degrees to 15 degrees of Cancer and Capricorn, that axis, or Aries Libra, that axis, you may feel this new moon activating uh, some of the themes around this theme one some more. So this was the first theme, a leap of faith into the unknown. And this unknown part of this new moon is a powerful one because part of our progression forward is to start relying on a experience of the unknown. And if you've seen signs, if you've felt synchronicities, you are right on time to develop and expand more into those qualities and guidance that science and synchronicities is giving us. So next, let's take a look at theme two that I've called No Choice But to Love. So here we have the second theme that I've called No Choice But to Love. And here we're going to start off with focusing on Venus there at almost 23 degrees of Cancer. She is a powerful force at this uh, new moon. And I'll walk you through what I see here. So Venus is sextiling Uranus here at uh, 25 degrees, almost 26 degrees of Taurus. This is a powerful sextile uh, as Uranus now is conjunct Perseus Algol. And we'll talk more about Algol in a minute. We also have Venus uh, squaring Chiron at 23 degrees of Aries there. So Chiron is in the mix here to help us expand into our feminine energies. And also in Cancer, Venus and Cancer here is really the receptive parts of ourselves, allowing, uh, receiving all the kinds of words that are associated with Venus and Cancer. Uh, the square to Chiron here is a powerful one, a big reminder at this new moon. So continuing with uh, the focus here on Chiron for a moment, Chiron is now opposite the Boots constellation and the fixed star actress. 
actress influence is a long standing influence on our ascension process here on earth. Actress specifically here opposite Chiron is the support that we need throughout our spiritual process to integrate our uh, previous focus on, let's say, more logical energy such as science, moving into and uh, transitioning, being the bridge into also incorporating uh, spirituality in the mix, and uh, which is carrying an energy of where we're going. So actress is uh, very much a guiding energy throughout uh, our ascension process here. And this opposition uh, is has been in place for a little while between Actress and Chiron. But at this new moon, this opposition is playing a role. And then we have Uranus conjunct Perseus Algol uh, opposite the Centaurus constellation and the fixed star Beta Centauri, also called Hadal. This is a very interesting opposition uh, highlighted now by Uranus coming into orb for Perseus constellation and Algol fixed star. This axis is the inner struggle between love and fear in many times. Uh, here we have Uranus really breaking up the uh, perceptions around what it takes to um, uh, succeed many times. Perseus conjunct Uranus is really also focused on the self-deception that we may have been in to um, what we value. Uranus wants to break up the patterns, the longstanding patterns uh, of self-deceptions to our true values and our truth, which is unconditional love. And Centaurus Beta Centauri Hadar is associated with energy uh, of pure unconditional love. So this opposition is highly important. This opposition also signifies the choice that we have between unconditional love and fear to some extent. And it's highlighted now by Uranus being in this conjunction with Perseus Algol. Now, what's even more activating is if you look at Mars's position here, Mars is now at 19 degrees of Taurus. And I was curious when Mars and uh, Uranus actually are going to have a conjunction here at 26 degrees, which is really uh, on top of and conjunct <laughs> Algol, very much so. And it's on July 15th is the peak of that conjunction. So between now, July 5th, and in 10 days, July 15th, we will have some sort of um, awakening around this choice between unconditional love and self-deception uh, or deceptive behaviors that many times Algol, the fixed star Algol, is associated with. And to add to that, on July 15th, like 10 days from uh, this Cancer New Moon, the Sun will be conjunct Venus there in Cancer at 22, 23 degrees of Cancer. So the position of Venus at this new moon is a significant one. And also Venus will then be conjunct where Mercury is now at five degrees of Leo at that time on July 15th. So there is a trail of communication here and highlights over the next 10 days from this Cancer new moon that is highly significant. And to further emphasize Venus's role here at this new moon is the square between Venus and Actress and her trine between uh, where she is now at 23 degrees of Cancer and Centaurus Beta Centauri at 24 degrees of Scorpio. And I should say also Boots is at 24 degrees of Libra. So if you have planets or points or angles between 23 to 26 degrees of Taurus and Scorpio axis there, or Aries Libra axis, you may feel this theme uh, even more 
prominent at this new moon. So I wanted to show you here Perseus constellation and the fixed star Algol, and also an image of Perseus here, uh, chopping off the head of Medusa. And Medusa is on the on the picture there, um, as a symbol of um, that self destruction or even the desire to suppress divine feminine. And uh, Medusa here is also the um, rebel in this uh, scenario. And that further also emphasize the, the role of the suppressed divine feminine here. And on the axis of Taurus, where uh, Uranus is conjunct Perseus Algol, opposite Beta Centauri Hadar, which is in the domain of Scorpio, it's also the tug of war between our values and the depth of our truth. So this axis here is super important. And with Uranus and Mars now coming in to activate Uranus, it, it, it's a significant uh, time for uh, an injection or release of uh, insights related to um, this dynamic within ourselves. What are, is our choice? Is it love or is it fear? So here we have Beta Centauri Hadar, and also I circled Alpha Centauri. It's a dual star system there in the constellation of Centaurus. And particularly Beta Centauri Hadar is associated with uh, unconditional love, the frequency of a very innocent love, but also very giving. And I feel that Beta Centauri Hadar is helping us to make that choice. Um, but by going within, we feel that pure, unconditional love and connection to the universe, which is uh, love is the connection frequency to uh, the universe, so to say. And this is also where we ignite this uh, urge to give, uh, urge to serve. And in Scorpio here, it's from the depths of our hearts. And this opposition here is really going to highlight uh, that axis of fear versus love. So Venus here is the guiding force at this new moon with regards to that choice of between fear and love. And uh, Venus's position also is helping to guide us what's coming next in the next uh, few weeks and helping to guide also that conjunction between uh, Uranus and Mars coming up. And when the sun is in Venus's position here uh, on July 15th at 20. Three degrees of Cancer. It will also emphasize this T square between Chiron and Actress and the growth here uh, in our spiritual process that we're invited to do and uh, reflect upon how we are incorporating a bigger multi dimensional perspective at this time as opposed to staying with values and experiences, uh, perhaps from the past. It also will highlight that axis between Beta Centauri Hadar and Perseus Algol uh, and simplified the choice between fear and love. So um, there is no choice but to love is the theme number two. Are you ready for theme number three? All right, let's take a look at theme number three, reprogramming Lyra soul memories. So here we have theme number three that I've called Reprogramming Lyra Soul Memories. And we start with Venus here opposite the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 that at 20 degrees of Capricorn. We've talked about quite a lot before, but now Venus is in the opposition here and highlights the need to balance the experiences, the soul memories from the Lyra Ring Nebula, which is often associated with human galactic heritage because of the influence on the collective and souls uh, incarnated here on Earth at this time. And then we have Mars's trine there from 19 degrees of Taurus to 20 degrees of Capricorn. Uh, Mars is here to uh, set this 
transformation in action and this focus, he's providing the action here through that trine. And lastly, we have Saturn's sextile from 19 degrees of Pisces to the Lyra ring nebula. So this is a, a very much a focus on the, the Lyra constellation as uh, we're now in between two full moons in Capricorn. So the continued focus on the Lyra constellation is, is very much so. Here we also have an opposition between Saturn and Juno, asteroid Juno, at 19 degrees of Virgo there. This is a very significant signature of this new moon. And do you see what I see? <laughs> I also see a kite. Uh, often these kite formations come up, and I haven't really drawn it all out here, but you can see the minor grand trine between Saturn, uh, Lyra ring nebula, and Mars there at the bottom, and then the opposition up to uh, asteroid Juno. This forms a kite. So Juno in Virgo here is a important signature for this new moon. Juno is very much focused around partnerships, making com commitments, and the balance that we may want to, to have in a partnership or a commitment. When Saturn is in opposition to Juno here, it's a lesson that we may have to learn because we may reflect on uh, past commitments we've made and how they have worked out. <laughs> and how do we want to make a commitment to ourselves or uh, partners or people around us, but mostly at this new moon with the themes that are going on, it's about ourselves and our awareness of to what extent do we want to make a commitment to our path forward. And here it is this uh, consideration that we now have time to do these next 10 days until uh, Mars really hits Uranus there. So now is the opportune time at this new moon to start contemplate what does a commitment mean to me? So here I just added also the trine from uh, Venus to Beta Centauri Hadar. And even though it's not fully written out here, I spot a double kite formation. Uh, and you see the symmetry in this image here, even though all the lines are not uh, written out. This is a um, synchronicity, if you will, that we've talked about before that binds together uh, energies of the future and energies of the past. So this is a juncture of uh, decision-making and contemplation of what is the commitment we want to make to ourselves and others at this time. What are we choosing? Is it fear? Is it love? Are we going to lean on past experiences or do we want to follow the direction of Selassia uh, to start to... Um, connect to other realms for guidance. And if you notice, we're dealing with earth and water elements here uh, in this uh, symmetry. So um, this is also highlighting for us the um, manifestation physically in the physical world is also um, potential. Saturn opposite Juno may indicate a new phase of a soul contract. So if you have 19, 20 degrees of Virgo or Pisces or the water and earth elements, you may feel this new moon and this uh, theme a little bit extra emphasized. So here we have the Lyra ring nebula, M57 uh, on the sky map, but also the beautiful uh, image there to tune into. And here we also have Juno in Virgo sitting here, empowered, making a balanced decision and contemplating uh, the value of a partnership or commitment uh, at this time.
Yuna also have a peacock next to her. And I love that image because the peacock is very much self-expression. And here we are uh, now when we're contemplating making a commitment to ourselves for increased and more expressive self-expression. And lastly, I have a little extra bonus thing here I wanted to mention. A couple of videos ago, I pulled in the asteroid Atlantis, and I was curious about where uh, asteroid Atlantis is now at this new moon. And uh, Atlantis is at 29 degrees of Leo, conjunct Leo Regulus, and 29 degrees is a culmination degree. It's also making a quincunx to Neptune there at 29 degrees of Pisces. And how I interpret this quincunx is that we are about to shift a significant phase in our evolution. This is a culmination of uh, Atlantean energies that also Neptune is here to guide us through. Part of this energy signature between Neptune and Atlantis is very much uh, at the collective level. Regulus is associated with Archangel Raphael and healing and also creativity and allowing our creative self to be expressed. So if you have 29 degree anywhere in your chart, you uh, may also experience an ending of a phase of your soul contract at this time and feel that more um, emphasized at this new moon. So here we are at this new moon in Cancer, uh, allowing ourselves to reflect upon the experiences that we've had throughout our journey, whether it's uh, in this life or past lives and beyond, uh, realizing that this may be the juncture that we have been uh, feeling and that it's time now to take a even deeper step into the unknown to be able to uh, find out for ourselves and make a new commitment to love per because of the uh, shift in our uh, experience, our experience with other realms, experiences of ourselves as a multidimensional being, but also allowing that uh, past energy to be fading away as we step into the urge of serving and sharing more with the community, with the collective, because there's so much uh, inner work that has been taking place. And this new moon is an acknowledgement of that. Uh, so here we are talking about taking a leap of faith in the first theme into the unknown and the new moon's role here, uh, highlighting human galactic heritage associated with Sirius and with Lyra Vega in particular, but also the support from uh, Corvus Algarab and the South Node conjunct uh, True Lilith there, helping to clean out the last pieces that needs to be let go of. And also the choice that we have available now, making a new commitment perhaps uh, to love. Perseus, Algol, and Uranus together, that is a powerful combination, but also with Mars getting there in 10 days after this new moon on July 15th. That is something um, that we can't miss because now we have the opportunity to reprogram some of the um, soul memories that we have carried for so long. Uh, it's time to release them now and make a new commitment to ourselves and to our uh, collective on what it means to move forward. Salasia is one of the energies that are ushering us forward encouraging us to have an intimate relationship with our spirituality and allowing that experience of the supernatural to be part of our everyday experience. And many of the soul memories are also uh, experiences from incarnations in Atlantis at this time. Atlantis, uh, as the asteroid, is at 29 degrees of Leo now. Uh, making a quincunx to uh, Neptune. So there is some uh, imbalance there that is going to be rectified.
So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this Cancer New Moon energy some more? The first question is, how do you strengthen your relationship with the unknown? And this question really comes from that integration uh, between science and spirituality. We are leaving a environment of only relying on the material world for evidence into also incorporating the unseen and taking a leap of faith into trusting the unknown. So here we have that bridge now. And uh, how do you develop a strengthened relationship with the unknown? The second question is, where are you at this moment on the path of choosing between fear and love simplified? And sometimes it's uh, not a, a black and white answer to that, but sense within yourself where you are in the process of fully trusting and believing that unconditional love is available to you at all times. The third question is, what does a commitment mean to you? And this may be a different definition that you've ever contemplated. A commitment to self, a commitment to serve, a con commitment to uh, your own growth. Anything, uh, any aspect of life can be uh, um, renewed commitment to. So now is a great time to um, talk about with yourself about what does a commitment mean to you. If you feel called to share some thoughts around these questions in the comment section, feel free to do so. I would love to see how you are uh, working with these questions. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I am so excited to share this New Moon in Cancer uh, video and audio with you. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Visit me on ulrikasullivan.com and I'll be back soon with another one. Bye.